I'm not a movie commentary channel, but I do like to talk about artistic things and entertainment is art, it's culture. And the state of modern entertainment has recently been a pretty peculiar thing to me. You have these big corporations that are churning out film after film, most of which don't seem to really be that good anymore. I mean, you have Netflix that is literally being sued by an entire country for reimagining Egyptian culture and Egyptian history. Then you have changed lyrics to The Little Mermaid because how dare a song imply in 2023 that a man should kiss the girl that clearly likes him back. Whether we love or hate them, as every piece of entertainment does, the movies of today also tell us a lot about the current state of our society. And that's the angle that I want to approach this topic from today. If you're new to my channel, hello, I'm Lana. I usually share my creativity here on my channel, and sometimes we make video essays as well. So if you like a variety of topics like I do, hit that subscribe button. Right, so what can modern entertainment tell us about our society? Every piece of art, visual, art, music, movies, they're all a reflection of the values that we as a society hold. Maybe not in a direct sense, but reality inspires art. However, it's also fair to say that filmmakers nowadays seem to prefer their own little bubble and don't seem to be that interested in creating things that people actually want, or don't seem to be interested in hiring people that actually have fresh and creative ideas to bring to the table. The movie industry, not in its entirety, but when it comes to many big films, seems to be less about creative expression and more about pushing a certain idea. It's funny because these big corporations like Disney and Netflix and Amazon, if you will, they know that what they're churning out is generally not being well received. But I think this just goes to show how true the phrase, there is no such thing as bad publicity is. They know that their movies are underperforming, but they're not interested in the public's feedback all that much. They just want to have their diversity no matter the cost. But I think everyone will agree that there are ways to make diversity feel organic and like it's part of the story, not shoehorned in where it's clear that this was the main reason for making a show in the first place. Just like in the past, John Wayne playing Genghis Khan in the 1950s is as ridiculous as, I don't know, having a black Anne Boleyn. Oh, wait. Old Hollywood had its issues, of course, and like the entertainment industry of today, that was also a sign of the times. But it's strange how now, now that we know better, instead of telling stories and legends and history of people who they claim that they want to elevate, these corporations prefer to opt for a type of revisionism, literally revising old films that are no longer considered politically correct. God forbid an evil witch tries to convince Ariel that men like women who hold their tongue. This is 2023. Women must be empowered and they must rap aggressively like a seagull that's having a heart attack. Remember the swamp? Remember my song in the swamp? And I was like, where? Pick up, where? Where? That's where it's at today. This tells us that the people in charge in the movie industry think that the only marketable stories are the tried and true stories that were a hit in the past and are still beloved now. How hypocritical is this? Instead of actually researching and highlighting the culture of the people that they say they wish to give a spotlight to, they take the old stories and sprinkle in that diversity. Gender swap, race swap, whatever have you. I remember my grandmother saying to me, I don't care what they tell you in school, Cleopatra was black. Here, take this tried and true role because we don't trust that the audience will like you in an original one, is what seems to be said between the lines. There is of course no way to be truly original. Everything is a derivative of something, everything is inspired by something. Even if the story itself has not yet been told, the themes have been told in some way or another. That said, just because there is no truly original idea to bring into creation doesn't mean that there are no new stories worth telling. The process of taking a story and transforming it to say, we no longer stand for what was said here, we need to fix a few things, seems quite contradictory. 
Because if it's so bad, why are you telling the story again at all? If there is so much to change, if there are so many problems, why not letting the story die? Well, because they know that it won't die. Because it's still popular and that's why they're bringing it back, trying to capitalize off of it. Why then is there such a push to rewrite the old? Why not make new and inclusive fictional shows? Whether you think racial diversity is implemented well or not, Bridgerton, for example, is so fictionalized from the made-up characters to the costumes to the storyline that having a diverse cast just doesn't seem that out of character. It seems to kind of fall in line with the rest of the show. It does seem convincing as another element of this fictional universe. And it's very clear that it's fiction. It never tries to be anything else. It doesn't claim to be a reimagining, a documentary. I imagine her to have curly hair like me and a similar skin color. Or take Who is the Great, set in the time of Catherine the Great. It's fiction very loosely relying on history. The cast is diverse, the language is modern, the clothes are anachronistic, a mix of modern fabrics, modern designs, but 18th century styles. And no one cares because the show is entertaining. We just accept this fictional world for what it is. It doesn't try so hard to tell us that I am a token of diversity, you look at me. No, I'm just a show and I'm a show made in the modern time so everyone gets a spot. Great. I think ultimately what the current state of modern entertainment tells us is that while there are good, original, diverse shows out there, there are still far too many movies that aim to rewrite history, even when it comes to fiction and they're rewriting fictional movies from the past to cater to modern sensibilities. And this reveals the duplicitous nature of some of these production houses. In cases where an established character gets replaced by one with a different skin tone or a different gender, the sole reason for this is virtue signaling. And we as consumers, as well as actors who value themselves and their work, should not settle for this low effort, recycled, so-called entertainment. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I'll see you soon. Wow!